Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Lucy Gray, and I'm your host today for uh, our regularly scheduled webinar. However, I've recorded this ahead of time because I am on the road right now and traveling and will not be available at our usual time. So this recording and all the resources are available to you, and you'll be able to review this on your own tonight. Next week, we'll be live again on June 6th. But in the meantime, you have to settle for a recording uh, of me and save your questions for next week. I am uh, currently in New York City, uh, traveling for work, and next week we will be live again. So welcome everyone, we're glad to have you here. And tonight our topic is going to be creating effective presentations, and hopefully you'll pick up some tips and tools that will help you uh, design presentations that you can use in your classroom, or in your classes, or whatever setting is appropriate. So without further ado, I'm going to save or share my screen and go to the Google slide deck that I've prepared for uh, tonight's webinar. And if you have not joined us before, there's a survey we'd like you to take and the link is here. And you can also access these slides by going to bit.ly slash tech talk six slides and you'll be able to uh, click on all the links that I'm about to show you and save this presentation to your Google Drive if you'd like to do so. So these slides are freely available to you to look at on your own, and you may want to access them at bit.ly slash tech talk six slides. There's a link again if you need it uh, one more time in a larger font. And we also um, have put this recording and other resources into our Google Classroom. To go to Google Classroom, you need a couple things. You need to, uh, first you're going to go to this link, classroom.google.com. You're going to log in with your personal Gmail address, which you should create at some point if you haven't done so already. If you use a school Gmail address, you may have problems logging in because you may not have the right permissions to get into an outside Google Classroom, one that is outside your school's domain. So make sure that you use uh, uh, your own Gmail address and you'll have a better chance for success. You're going to then join um, our class and you are going to uh, enter a code that will give you access to all the previous webinars, uh, the recordings, and all the resources that we've, we've um, gathered uh, during the past several weeks. So uh, to quickly demonstrate what this looks like, I'm going to go to a new tab. Oops. And go to classroom.google.com. And you can see that I belong to several classrooms. Your dashboard may look a little different if you've never joined a classroom before. You're going to click on the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. I'll zoom in there so you can see what it looks like. And you're going to click on this and then join class. And then you're going to enter a code that I'm going to give you and that will give you permissions to get into the classroom and see all the previous great stuff that we've collected over the past several weeks. The code is X, uh, YXFLGJ7. So make sure you take a screenshot of this or capture it with your phone or write down on a piece of paper so that you have it for future reference. And you can always find any Google Classroom that you've joined at classroom.google.com. Make sure you use your personal Gmail address. So our topic for today, and it's actually Tech Talk 6, is creating effective presentations. And we want to thank Rio Salada College for making this event possible, so thank you, Rio. And this series is, uh, going on between now and the end of August. 
there will be almost weekly sessions on different topics that may be of interest to educators on how to integrate technology into your curriculum. And we hope that you will join us as often as you can and invite friends and colleagues to join us as well. This is completely open to the public. So make sure you pass this information on to people that you know. Uh, about me, my name is Lucy Gray. I'm a former classroom teacher and technology coach. I also uh, taught middle school computer science and uh, have uh, evolved into a consulting role where I work with schools and companies and help them become more innovative. So if you want to know more about me, here's my LinkedIn profile and my email address. You can get in touch with me. But uh, this is some kind of basic information just so you know where I'm coming from today. Our objectives for today are to review last week's session on formative assessment and to discuss ISTE standards for this session. Uh, we're going to look at some presentation tools and explore Google Sites. We also will talk about what it takes to uh, uh, create an effective presentation. And then uh, we'll do a little bit of review and talk about next steps. Our next webinar, just for future reference, is June 6th, and our topic will be working with multimedia, which is kind of a good uh, topic to piggyback on the topic that we're talking about today. The International Society for Technology and Education publishes a set of standards for students, educators, administrators, and other uh, related folks, and the ISTE standards are a good way for you to assess where you are with your technology use. Uh, the standards that we're going to be uh, looking at today are the learner standard, the leader standard, collaborator standard, and designer standard. There's several more, but these are the ones that we're really focusing on. Uh, through our community, you are pursuing professional interests by creating and actively participating in this global learning network. You're modeling for colleagues the identification, exploration, evaluation, curation, and adoption of new digital resources like Google Slides. And uh, you're going to be collaborating and co-learning in this series um, as we go along. So hopefully you will use the tools that I'm showing you to personalize and um, learning for students. And you'll be able to apply instructional design principles to your work to, to create the best possible products for um, helping students learn with technology. If you have not introduced yourself before in our webinars, please go to this link and double click on our Padlet and add a brief note about yourself so that everybody gets to know you. And we also have another Padlet where you can indicate what your favorite personal use of technology is. It doesn't have to be anything education related, but then what is something that you really, really, really like to do with technology? Let us know about that. So with formative assessment, uh, we have a section in a Google Classroom. Uh, I'm going to go there right now and show you what that looks like. So here's our Google Classroom from um, which houses all of our information. And if you look under Tech Talk number five, assessing student work, you will find uh, our recording from last time. You'll find um, our, my slides from last week, and then you'll find some resources that will support your teaching and learning with formative assessment. Formative assessment is to inform your work and help you make instructional decisions. And so we talked last time, these are the slides from last time, uh, we talked about uh, several tools that uh, were really useful, including, I'm going to skip ahead to the, to, uh, the section where these are. We talked about, just to quickly review, we talked about Flipgrid, which allows you to record video uh, for short periods of time and respond to prompts. Uh, it's a very creative way for students to respond to prompts. We talked about the popular game uh, 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 resource called Kahoot, where you can play games and content. You can create your own or you choose some from the library of that, of Kahoot's. Nearpod is, is a combination of a, of a presentation tool and a formative assessment tool. You can guide your students through a series of learning activities on their digital devices. 
And all of these so far, by the way, are cross-platform. You can use them on a variety of devices. Some are web-based, some also have apps, uh, including Android and iOS apps. We also took a look at formative, um, and so those were kind of some of the basic ones that we talked about last week and the importance of, of uh, digital um, assessment tools. So make sure that you uh, go back and review those if you did not get a chance to be part of last week's session. So when we talk about creating effective presentations, um, I'd like to really start with some design basics. And the person that I think about when, um, when I'm thinking about effective presentations are people who always have really great slides that don't have a lot on them and they tell a story. And I learned, in, for example, Steve Jobs was known for having really great slide design when he did keynotes for Apple. Um, one person who used to work for Apple and who's written several books on slide design is Gar Reynolds. He lives in Japan and maintains a website that has lots of resources that will help you get started with designing effective, simple, and organized uh, presentations. And he has three steps for, for this, preparing, designing, and delivering. And I've summarized some of the thoughts here just to get us started here. Uh, when you're preparing to create a presentation, you really need to know what the purpose is of, of your presentation. You need to know your audience. Uh, you need to know how long you have to speak. All that kind of information is really important in helping you design your presentation. Important, it's very important also to have compelling content. It is possible to kind of pull off a presentation without a lot of compelling content, but you want to make sure that um, you know, in order to be as successful as possible, you probably want to have some rich, interesting ideas to share with your audience. At the same time, you don't need to overthink this or overdo this. Keep things simple in terms of your messaging and in terms of your design. And you may want to start with an outline um, and, and use old school methods to kind of design what you think your presentation is going to look like. Some people like to sketch things out on paper. Some people plan it out in a drawing on their iPads, whatever it is, create an outline so that you have a clear structure and organization to your talk and that way you can make sure it flows. You also um, should not include a ton of text and be succinct in your messaging. You know, what is the essence of your presentation? What is your elevator pitch that you're trying to get across uh, to your audience and, and whether it's students or teachers or your peers? Um, and typically, good presentations, according to Gar Reynolds, have, um, have a good story behind them. So make sure that you have some anecdotes that you can add that will personalize your presentation. And finally, it's really important that you rehearse whatever you put together. In terms of design, some of the same things apply. Uh, for instance, keep it simple. Uh, you should probably only use a couple different fonts within a presentation. Um, you don't want to go crazy with transitions and animations and, and busyness that will detract from your messaging. And your graphics should not be pixelated. They should be high quality. Uh, you should be citing your images and where you're finding them. Even if they're freely available on something like Google Image Search, you should do the right thing. And just like you would with books and writing a research paper, you want to cite where you've got those graphics. Um, you want to avoid using hackneyed templates or um, and instead customize the templates that are given to you in PowerPoint or whatever presentation tool you're using. Uh, use charts when appropriate. Uh, select your colors and fonts well. Again, probably no more than two to three fonts. And, you know, while nobody's, you know, probably in, the, in this webinar is an expert with, with slide design and art, um, you may want to think about how colors are complementing each other and how they evoke a mood um, in your presentation. Uh, using audio and video is important, but you also need to know how to control it in your presentation, so make sure that you can do that. Um, and also, it helps to spend some time in the slide view or sort of view of whatever program you're using so that you can see how your presentation flows uh, once you get started. 
from the presentation perspective, GAR recommends that you show your passion, you start strong, and that you keep it things relatively short. Nobody likes to be lectured to for huge periods of time. And, and so you may want to make this as succinct as possible. Uh, when you're actually presenting, you may want to use a remote control. Uh, when I use Keynote um, on my Apple, on my Mac, I actually have a um, app on my phone that will let me control it. So you may want to think about remote controls, either a separate device or something on your phone that will control your slides. Um, and that will help you move around the room and be a little bit more interactive with your uh, peers. Uh, make sure to have eye contact, make sure to keep the lights on so people don't fall asleep, and always be courteous, gracious, and professional. These are tips that you can also pass on to your students as well, because I think they're beneficial to them uh, in general. So um, some resources, uh, really, really quickly, and then I'm gonna get into a kind of a tutorial for you. There are lots of presentation tools out here. These are ones that are commonly used in education. Bunsy, Google Slides, Haiku Deck, Apple's Keynote, uh, Nearpod, Prezi. Prezi does things in more of a web-based, it's web-based, but more of a, kind of jumps from point to point. Uh, it's not a linear slide tool. So um, these are just some other ones that you might want to experiment with. But today we're really gonna focus on Google Slides because there's so much you can do with it. And I think it's important that you have background in Google Docs, in Google Slides, and in Google Sheets. So um, another th thing that you need to know when you're working with uh, presentation tools is where to find images. And these are just a few places where you might find copyright friendly images that you can use in your presentations. I like Canva because they give you a platform basically for um, making your own graphics and there's some great templates in there. Um, I use it all the time. Uh, Creative Commons, uh, if you don't know what Creative Commons is, uh, Creative Commons is an, is an organization in California, um, originally out of Stanford, I believe, which gives alternative licensing to uh, content that people have created. People can designate if things are, are remixable or republishable and who can um, benefit from this. There are six different types of licenses and um, they have a search feature that lets you find uh, images and, and that sort of thing that have been um, given a Creative Commons license. So you can find stuff there. Google Images is another place that you can find um, pictures, but they're not necessarily copyright friendly, so you need to be careful. Uh, I use the Noun Project in my slides. Um, I actually pay for this, and I'll show you later how I do that. Um, and I put icons into my presentations to give them a little bit of pizzazz. Uh, Pixabay and Wikimedia are two other resources where you can find images. And next week, we're gonna really kind of dive into how to deal with multimedia and, and edit it and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll probably dig into this a little bit more next week. So I'm going to escape from my slides and show you what slides looks like right now. Um, and I'm going to open up a new slide deck by going to my drive, drive.google.com. That's my home base for everything Google related. And I'm going to click on the button that says new. and Google Slides. And it's, this is very similar to PowerPoint, only it's in the cloud, this is up on the, it's in the internet, it's not uh, stored directly on my computer. So the first thing I'm gonna do with my presentation is I'm going to title it. And by clicking the upper left hand corner, I can go in here and type in uh, Lucy's demo is what I'm going to call the slide deck. And you can see that I have one slide on the left hand side and it's in the, in the, I can decorate it in the middle. I'm going to move this out of the way for right now because I don't need it. That's an add on that I have. And I'm going to remove it. Okay. So you can see on the left hand side, this is kind of the, the sorter view. Um, the main slide is in the middle. 
And then on the right hand side, I can pick a theme to work with. And you can also customize these themes and I'll get into that a little bit. I'm going to select the last one. It's called um, game day. Note that in the bottom hand corner, you can also import a theme. If you have a theme from somewhere else, you can import it in here as one of your choices uh, for your themes. So I'm gonna click on the game day one. That's the one that I want, okay? And I'm going to give this a title. Lucy's demo slides. Uh, I'm gonna put the date in. Today is May 29th, 2018. And there I have my title slide. Awesome. I'm going to unclick, unselect, themes. And now I'm going to give you kind of a guided, a guided tour of where you can go with this. So the first thing I do with any piece of software is I check out the different file menus, uh, these things, and, what, and look at all the tools that um, I can use. So under the file menu, you can share, you can create a new um, Google spreadsheet or form or whatever. I can import slides, and I can import slides from uh, existing PowerPoint presentations and that sort of thing. I can also make a copy, and this is what I find to be really useful. I've created a template for the slides for these webinars, and I make a copy of them each time and fill in um, what I need to for new content. And it makes things go a little bit faster for me. You can download um, these slides as PowerPoint files. So if you need to go back and forth between PowerPoint and Google Slides, you can do that. It's probably going to lose a little bit of formatting if you're too fancy with things. Um, but there are also other formats that you can download the, a, a set of Google Slides as, as JPEGs, as PDFs, all sorts of different things. You can email this as an attachment to someone. And just like we had in Google Docs, you can check out the version history of when people worked on a set of Google Slides. So for teachers, this is really useful because if you have students working on a project as a collaborative group and they're making a slide deck, you can see who contributed to it and when, and if they're working according to the, the, you know, the deadlines that you're saying. So this is always really helpful and you can always revert back to a previous version if you've you know, mess something up with your slides as well. You can rename your slides under the file menu, move it to the trash, move it somewhere else in your Google Drive, publish it, and you can also use different languages. And you can also print out these slides as well. So that's the first menu that I would check out if I were you. Under edit, I think you're probably going to see a very similar menu to what you would see in, on, on PowerPoint. You can undo, redo, paste, all that. Notice that there are keyboard shortcuts for these tools. You should know how to copy, you should know how to paste, uh, Command C, Command V, and if you want to um, cut something out altogether, it is Command X. So for instance, if I take out uh, Demo, I can press um, the Command key on my Mac and X, and it will take that out, okay? So um, make sure you know your, your shortcuts and that sort of thing. Under view, there are lots of different choices. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can snap to a grid, uh, you can show guides that will help you organize and center your, um, your project your, and that sort of thing. Uh, you can go full screen, you can show speaker notes down below like you would in, in PowerPoint. And I can also uh, drag this so that the, the, the speaker notes down here um, so I can, they're a little bit more visible to me and the actual slide is a little bit um, smaller if I want to do that. So uh, you can change this stuff under view and make sure that certain things are showing up. But you can also uh, mouse over this part and make things smaller or bigger. 
I like using speaker notes for um, scripts and other information that I want to see, but I don't necessarily want everybody else to see when I'm presenting um, and for additional information, basically. And, you know, I don't want Crowley on the slide. So just be aware of that. Um, under insert, put in pictures, and they can be from all these different sources. So here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to make a new slide, and I want it to be blank, just so that I can demonstrate some things to you. So under insert, I can search the web, my drive, my Google Photos, or use the link to a picture. I can also use my camera. So my camera is going to want me to um, take a picture using my webcam on my computer, and it may be a little bit different on your computer. So I can go and take a bunch of pictures, and then uh, take one and insert it into my slides. Isn't that lovely? Okay. And there's a lot more you can do with that picture, by the way. Uh, notice when I have it selected, oops, uh, in sl by selected I mean I've clicked and chosen that object on my slide. Notice that the menus up here change. So if I, right now I'm, I'm only, sl I'm selecting the slide, there's a blue um, frame around that slide, but if I click on that image, now that blue frame is around that image. And this toolbox up here changes. So there, if you're working with a picture, you can you know, recolor them. Um, you can make them transparent. And do some editing right here. Um, To make it a little bit look a little bit different, so I just I added a drop shadow to that and uh, a reflection. Not very exciting, but um, and then I can move this around and with my guides, I can center it on the page or do whatever I want with it. So that's how you insert a picture and do a little bit of editing with it. You can in, insert a text box. And you can move that around if you need to or change the font. And you can also insert video, which is awesome. So um, you can, if you have video in your Google Drive, you can do that. So I have some video and I could insert it in. Um, so here's a video that I made on my phone. And I insert it in here. This is actually an app that I use that um, records my drawing, which is kind of cool. Um, I can insert a picture, a video from YouTube uh, by searching for it. So I can say, you know, 2016 World Series. Of course, the Chicago Cubs one, and I can find a, a video and insert it into my slide as well. So I'm just demoing how you would do some of these things. Notice that when I click on a video, my toolbar changes a little bit, and there's some format options for this too. I can add a drop shadow, um, which is not very exciting to me. But you do have a few options, um, only video options here too. Uh, this is cool. So what I can do is I can have the video autoplay when I come to that slide and I can customize the starting and the ending points if I want to. Like maybe you have a really long video and you want to show your kids but not the whole thing. You can kind of point to a specific clip within that video. That's really nifty. Okay, so, so far I put in a couple videos, a picture, some text. Um, you can put in shapes and people really like to use these. I'm gonna actually make another, another blank slide just to kind of keep things clean here. I'm going to insert a shape. 
I meant to have a smiley face. There's one. So I can draw my smiley face and there it is. Um, and again, because I have this shape selected, I have some tools where I can change the colors and all sorts of different things on here, okay? So you can use those drawing tools to add um, kind of icon-like graphics to your slides should you want to do that. There are some equation ones in there if you're looking to do math-oriented things. Um, additionally, you can insert a table into a slide if that would be useful to you. Maybe you want to make some sort of chart. And you can also put in um, charts and draw data from your Google Sheets to make a column or pie chart or whatever. There's also a diagram tool. And there are all sorts of fancy templates that you can use so that you can design your own template. So let's try one of these. So here's, um, wow, these are pretty nifty. So you can, you know, Google provides you with some charts and that sort of thing that you can customize in order to get your point across with your work. Um, there's also word art, just like you would see in Microsoft Word. And again, you can customize uh, your word art by selecting the word art and looking at the toolbar. And playing around with it a little bit. Word art can also be rotated. I'm going to get rid of this graphic in the back. Oh, I just got rid of part of it. Okay, so you can um, expand this and make it smaller by grabbing these handles. But I believe if you put your cursor in various places, you should be able to. Um, move it a little bit more. Um, I've centered it on the page. Uh, try control click, maybe. No, command click. There's a way to make this, um, let's see. There should be a way to flip this and do things. And I'm blanking on how I would do that right now. But you can move this stuff around and change its orientation. Uh, under uh, line, lots of different kinds of lines that you may want to do, including you can scribble and make your own drawing. And that's under the insert menu as well. Now, uh, animation is you can take, uh, you have to select an object to animate and you can make it do th certain things. So in PowerPoint, um, you might have this, you might do this too. So in this slide, I chose for it to fly in and click. So that's one thing that you can do. You want to keep these kinds of animation and busyness to a minimum though. It's um, a little distracting and doesn't add to effective uh, slide design. Uh, if you are working on a presentation with um, a partner or a group of people, you can also leave a comment on the side. So I can leave a comment for my collaborators. Uh, don't forget uh, to insert uh, a map. You know, whatever comment I want to do, and they'll be notified if this is shared with them, that there, there's a comment waiting for them. And whenever the task or problem or whatever is resolved, you just click on this resolve button and the comment goes away. So commenting is a really great tool for collaboration when you're working on shared decks. Or if you're a classroom teacher, you can go and evaluate the students' work and use that commenting tool as well. Um, you can make new slides, you can share, you know, um, add uh, you know, slide numbers to your deck under the insert menu. Under format, um, I'm, going to I'm going to make a new slide. 
Um, let's see. This really works with text. So I should make a slide that has some text in it. So I'm going to change my layout to this one. So I put some text in there. And under format, you can see that nothing is, is highlighted because I haven't selected any text. So I'm going to highlight my text that I put in there and go to format. And now I can do things to it. I can change the size, the color, uh, capitalization, um, put in bullets, add spaces before the paragraph. Um, and I can also clear any existing formatting if I need to. So lots of different things you can do, uh, including format options, which will um, basically give you drop shadows and reflections on that. So under format, I'm going to align in the dent text. Um, I don't know what I want. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do some bullets. I'm going to, I can do a numbered list with six different options or a bulleted list. I'm going to pick a bulleted list. And then I can um, uh, so you can go and you can change all this text. Right now it has a bullet on it. And I selected a bullet that's a little different. It has an arrow in it, but it adds a little bit more pizzazz than just your plain old bullet. Um, so that's under format. Under slide, this is where you make a new slide, copy a slide, delete a slide, or skip a slide. You can also change the background, which is really, that's not lovely, is it? Uh, and when you change the background, you can also put in a image. So let's see, do I have any pictures I want to use? Um, I can take a picture from my Google Drive and put it in here as a background which doesn't look very good, does it? So I'm gonna do Command Z and undo that. And Command Z again, because I really hate that green color. Uh, but you can change the background um, of your slides and uh, you can also apply existing layouts that come with the theme that you selected for your slides. So I could change this to um, that, that format if I wanted to. Now, um, I can also change the theme. Let's say I don't like the blue and orange theme. I'd rather have uh, this dark one with blue and green. I can do that and it will change my formatting to match that theme as well. Uh, I'm gonna undo that because I'm not crazy about that. Um, the other thing that you should know is, and this is really, really useful. You can edit the map. Let's say you wanna take one of these themes and use it, but you want a different font or you want a different background or you want to use different colors, you can do that. And actually, every time I use slides for these webinars, I'm taking one template and I'm changing the color on them pretty easily. It only takes me a few minutes. And that's because I'm editing the master slides. This is a pro tip. So you click on Edit Master. And let's say I want to change that font to from alpha, whatever it is, to love you like a sister. And it's going to change it on any slide that had that text from now on. So I, if I create another slide just like this, it's going to have the same font. That's a really cool font, isn't it? That's love you like a sister. I don't know how they come up with these names. So um, if you want to like create your own custom template, instead of using the trite and boring ones that come with Google Slides, 
you would go to slide and edit master and, and jazz it up a little bit. Um, so, uh, so slide, these are everything that you need to do with a slide is under this menu. Arrange, what this will do is, um, arrange will let you center something on the page. It will let you move something backwards and forwards. Sometimes you need to layer things in different order. Um, that's what arrange will do for you. It also will take things and move, if, uh, let's say you have a bunch of images that you want to put together in a group for some reason, and so, and lock them or whatever, you can select your images, go to arrange, um, and group them. And now my things are not letting me group them. Let's see if I can group two things here. I'm using the shift key to select two, my two, of uh, my picture and my video there. I go to arrange, it's not letting me group it. Maybe I need to have another picture in there. That might be what it needs to be. Or I could group this text box with a picture. Oh, let me do it. Group, yep, it will let me group it. So now this picture and this text box move together and I don't have to move everything and line it up every time I need to move it a little bit. So they're kind of glued to each other. So that is called grouping and that's under arrange. If you do not see any of these tools activated, it's because you have not selected anything that it works with, that, it, that, that, that you need to select something first and then go to arrange. Um, under tools, this is where things get really fun and this, this, um, this differentiates, um, I'm gonna get rid of my speaker notes for a second and I'm going to get rid of my guides if I can. I don't, I don't want them showing anymore. Okay, so um, under uh, spelling, you can do spell check, which is kind of obvious. There's something called explore that will help you with your design, help you customize things. So um, this may not be a good example, but under slide, or I'm sorry, under tools and explore, they'll give me some suggestions on the right hand side for different layouts. And it will help you give you a more customized look. So for instance, um, I've done that actually in my slides. So this is um, our slide deck from uh, Tech Talk number five. If I go to this slide deck and I click on tools and explore, and oh, that didn't give me a good example, let's see. So here's a good example. So I have this slide, and that is actually a Google, a Google template, but they also give me some other ones that I can choose from um, instead of using the one that's provided. And that's kind of a cool way to kick up your design a little bit um, by using that explore piece. So, um, I don't know what happens when you search here. Oh, this is cool. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my demo one because I don't wanna mess with this. So uh, here's a blank slide. I can search my docs and the web for whatever I need. So if I want a picture of George Washington, it will show me facts and information about George Washington. It will show me images and it will also let me search my Google Drive. So I can click on a picture of George and then insert it into my presentation. Now, it is not cited in here really. Um, ideally, you would wanna put it into APA or MLA format, I guess, but uh, it does give you the link to where it was found and it is Creative Commons license. This one particularly is because it's coming from Wikimedia. So that's kind of cool. So maybe these are copyright friendly uh, and you can put an image in there. So to get that, how did I do that again? I went to tools, explore, search for a topic. Um, Click on images, find a picture, and insert it into my slide. And this one came from Flickr and it's probably Creative Commons licensed. Okay, 
the link, it's linked to that picture, so you can always go check it out on Flickr. Okay, so that's under tools. We did explore, there's a dictionary. There's something called Q&A history, and I'll show you what that is in a second. Um, and then voice type speaker notes. This is cool. So our speaker notes are opened, and I'm gonna click here and click on the microphone that pops up. Once upon a time, George Washington climbed Mount Rainier. Are my speaker notes working? Speaker notes, speaker notes, are you working? Why isn't it working? So what it should be doing, I'm gonna get rid of Explore for right now. Oh, there it is. It did work. Okay, let me try again. Red Rover, Red Rover, let George Washington come over. So what that does is it captures what I'm saying pretty accurately and puts it into the speaker notes. So if you have students who have difficulty writing a lot or writing quickly, um, you may want to have them do some writing in this um, verbally. We're using the voice typing. So that's under tools again, uh, voice type speaker notes. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that. Then the last thing I wanna show you here before I get to the Q&A piece is uh, Keep Notepad. So Google Keep looks like this. keep.google.com and it's kind of your note-taking tool. It's, it's similar to Evernote. Um, you can tag things and organize them and you know put pictures in here, um, all different things that you might want to use later on. And I've put in, um, I just have a bunch of junk in here. It, it, is, it works with Google Slides. So when I go to tools and um, keep notepad, it shows you the things that were most recently put into my Google Keep. So I can take, um, you know, a, a picture that I have saved here and insert it into my slide. So my suggestion would be like if you have students doing some sort of report would be maybe they look for pictures and put them in Google Keep for one one assignment and they look for copyright friendly pictures and that sort of thing. And then then maybe the next step is they build their outline of their of their presentation and they then build slides out for each part of that outline and then they insert their pictures in from Google Keep. So this can help you with research. Um, it can help find keep keep resources in a in a uh, in a place where it's easily found, um, and you may just find it to be useful in general for your own personal use. So that's under tools as well. Um, under preferences, you can just see that you can customize some things here with the keyboard with the keys. Nothing earth shattering there. But I do want to show you the, um, the Q&A piece. And this is something that I've not played with a ton. And if we were doing this live, I would have you try it out. Uh, when you are presenting this, you can go into presentation mode, which will be full screen mode. And it will look like this. You know, you don't see all the tools and whatever. Um, you can see that there's something that says Q&A and you can start a new question and audience feature. So what's going to happen is when I'm in presentation mode, uh, the audience can go to this uh, link on their mobile phones or laptops and they can ask questions while the presentation is going on. And then I can go to this page, you know, when I'm done or when I take a, uh, when I have a pause in my presentation and, um, and the questions will be here and I can respond to them. 
So this is kind of a cool way to um, interact with your audience and make sure that you audience members have a chance to ask questions. Um, so that's a kind of a, a newer feature in Google Slides that I have not paid for, I play with too much. So that is under tools. Um, Q&A history is, is where you would, you would also see those questions. But to activate it, you have to be in presentation mode. Um, and you can start it right here, Q&A. You can also have your notes show up. Um, and there's also a pointer feature too, which doesn't write on your slides, but just makes your pointer pop up a little bit more. Okay, so this is what it looks like in full screen mode. Ta -da. Okay, so this is kind of basic. Uh, it's like PowerPoint, except I think things really change when you get to the tools. You're not gonna see the same kinds of tools necessarily in PowerPoint. The other thing that it makes things unique with Google Slides is add-ons. And um, I'm gonna make a new slide. So we can play around with this a little bit. And under add-ons, remember we talked about add-ons in Drive and in Docs and in Sheets. There's uh, a little separate store almost of free or low cost third party tools that add functionality to these things. So Drive had this, Sheets had this, Docs had this, um, and you could get things from things that would help you do things with forms, or you could get one that helped you build a bibliography. There are lots of different ones. In Google Slides, there's also uh, add-ons. And under the add-ons menu, you go to Get Add-ons, and this little store will pop up, and you can see what's available here. And these are made by third-party people. I have not played with all of them. Some are better than others. Here's one called Magic Rainbow Unicorn Slides. I have no idea what that does, but it sounds like fun. So I'm going to click on that and click on the blue button to install it. And it's going to want to connect with my Google account. So I'm going to say yes. I'm so intrigued by that magic unicorn rainbow slides. OK, so here's my slides. And it's in the add-ons now here. So I click on Start. What's this going to do to my slides? Uh, select the text you wish to change to magic rainbow colors and then click the button below. Ooh, so I can, I select text. I can say what colors I want and start the magic rainbow magic. Oh, wow. That's kind of fun. All right. That's not very exciting. I mean, it's nothing complicated. So any text you take, uh, you know, you can highlight this, start the rainbow magic, and it changes it to a different color. So that's just kind of a fun, silly add-on. Um, there are other ones like slideshow ones, or and some of these you have to pay for. Like I paid for the noun project icons, um, and that's what I use to put, you know, simple images in my in my slides. So I don't know how much I paid for this, but I thought it was worth it. Now Project has some, uh, some of their stuff is free, I believe on their website. So these are all icons. There's very, very simple picture. If I uh, type in you know, a word like Paris, it's gonna show me icons that have to do with Paris. And I click on them and I can select the color I want it to be. And I can insert that icon into my graphic or into my slides. And um, you know I can keep doing that if I want to with other ones. So there are lots of different ones that you can find in here. This is called the noun project. And again, it's an add-on that you get from Get Add-ons. 
So you go to get add-ons, click on noun or search for noun, and you would find the icons for by noun project. The other one, um, that I like a lot to Adobe stock. I think I pay for that as well. Uh, document add-ons. Let me close these out. Oh, these are showing which ones I'm using right now. I get it. Okay. So if I want to get some add-ons, um, I would go here. This one for music teachers might be really useful. It's free. I need, let, need to allow Flat to use my account. And now my add-ons from here, Flat for slides, I can insert a musical snippet. Uh-oh, it's not working. Let me make another blank slide and see if that helps. Sometimes these don't work ideally um, because it relies on a third party. But this one looks like it's totally fine. So I can put in a, a sip it. And I can actually put the notation in don't ask me how to do this. It's a long time since I've dealt with music. I think I have to click something. Do insert. And then I can insert that piece into my presentation. So for music teachers, I can imagine that there's a lot, or music theory teachers, I can imagine that this would be like really cool and useful to them. So there are lots of add-ons here that I recommend that you play around with and look at a little bit more carefully. If you go to the All menu here and click on Education, you're gonna see some that are, are specifically for education. Um, if you're looking for accents, particularly if you're a foreign language teacher, um, Magic Make Copies, this makes copies of your Google Drive, Google Drive files, which Google Classroom already kind of does for you. So there's an audio player. Pear Deck is, a, is another formative assessment tool that you might find useful. There's lots and lots of different add-ons that you can try and experiment with. So um, be aware of that. Under help, you need to know that there is, you can search here if you don't know how to do something. It's really important that teachers learn how to help themselves and not get stumped by, you know, minor technical things. So go to help and see if you can find the answer. You can also go to Google's help documentation online and look at it. Um, and also keyboard shortcuts are available under help as well. Under, uh, under um, accessibility, this is brand, this is new to me. So if you have uh, students that have special needs and use a screen reader or braille or whatever, you can, um, you can enable some other features in here. So I'm wondering, um, I've not tried this yet. Let's say if I, if I select some text, what happens under accessibility, speak, I can speak the selection. Let's see if it works. It should read it out loud. I don't hear anything right now. Accessibility. So I'm going to select that sentence. Go to accessibility, speak. Hmm. Speak selection formatting. Not doing anything. Okay, I just wrote some more text. Let's see if it works. One more try. 
Hmm. Okay. I get that. Um, but they, this is, I think, you know, Apple stuff has generally been very uh, user friendly in terms of accessibility for people with special needs. And uh, it looks like Google is trying to keep up with some of the accessibility features here. I don't know enough about these yet. So um, take a look and see if you can figure them out. So that's Google Slides. Uh, now remember that if you, um, you can, uh, this little icon in the upper right hand corner will show you the comments, all the comments that are in the document. Um, the presentation mode again is where you can use the presenter view and blow it up to full screen and have Q and A enabled and that sort of thing. Uh, and then under share with Google Sheets, slides, and uh, Google Drive folders, you want to uh, share your. You may want to share your stuff with um, colleagues, so you can type in. Um, somebody's email address, add a note and share it with them. And you can also, if you click on advanced, you can tell them to be able, you can say, I want them to be able to uh, view, or I, I want everybody to be able to view it, or just view and comment in it, or view and edit it, okay? So the lowest level permission would be view. You just want people to look at it. The next one would be, I want people to do a little bit of uh, suggesting when they're editing and so they can comment or you can make them, you know, a co-writer or co-editor of your document by giving them editing privileges. I don't find that people or kids really abuse this, you know, that I've worked with. Uh, and there's always revision history so that you can go back and change something if you want to. So uh, I wouldn't get too nervous about this if I were you, if you, if you want to do that. Um, so I can, you know, like if I share this with Kim, I would send her a message with this document. I can also restrict people uh, from adding new people or from downloading, printing, or anything else with this if I really, really, really wanted to keep it restricted, uh, but viewable. So remember that sharing is really, really important. Uh, it's one of the, the, the features that makes all of the Google uh, Plus our Google G Suite applications um, so remarkable is that the ability to share and, and co-collaborate and co-create together with this. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about how you could use this instructionally. There are lots of resources in our Google, uh, in our Google Classroom of ideas for using this in the classroom. Um, but here's one that um, you may want to think about, and, and you could probably adapt this for various grade levels. So I've seen a high school history teacher um, create a slide deck, share it with his students, and each pair of students, he had kids and teams uh, of two, they had to research one person from, I think it was either American Revolution and Civil War, and <coughs> create one slide together of information about that person. And, um, and then the next team you know, took another slide and tackled another person. And so there was this collaborative slide deck of information related to whatever historical thing that they were studying that, that they could use as a study guide going forward. So, um, you know, think about how you're, you know, I think it's pretty boring when teachers lecture students using slide decks. So, I'm not sure if that's instructionally strong pedagogy. You know, if you're gonna do that, I would keep it pretty short and informative, but it's better and richer and deeper when you have your students create something together. It's, a, it's better than having a teacher yak at them. So think about how you can use this in, in useful ways. Um, if you're not sure where the resources are for, for thinking about more ide ideas related to this, remember our Google Classroom. We're on Tech Talk number six. Um, I've got, let me, show, let me walk you through these a little bit. Um, I've got presentation tips, and uh, I want to show you, sh I'll sh slide share, by the way, too. Um, this is from Gar Reynolds, and he's great with, with slide design. 
as is this company called Duarte. These people make some of the slide decks for Apple, from my understanding. Um, there's some other lists of tools that are presentation-related tools. If you want to try something like Haiku Deck or, or Prezi. Prezi. Um, and then under here, uh, from ShakeUp Learning and from uh, Vicki Davis, there are some things that you could do. Um, there's also there's also another link I thought I'd put in here. Yep. From Matt uh, Miller, 10 Google Slides activities to add awesome to your class. And uh, from Jennifer Gonzalez, 16 ideas for student projects using Google Docs, Slides, and Forms. So here, if you're looking for more instructional ideas, take a look at that. I've also put some video tutorials in here, like how to create a timeline in Google Slides. Uh, so, you know, we've already gone on for quite a bit of time here. So I'm not going to bore you to death with that. Um, but think about how you can use this to be a, a tool that invites student creation as opposed to adults talking at students. Um, so let me go back to my original slide deck and then we'll wrap up here. So uh, we covered uh, the features of Google Slides. We talked about add-ons. We talked about exploring QA, sharing. Uh, keep notepad and we did talk about editing the master slide so and help so we covered everything I wanted to cover today that's great uh, your homework is to go into the slide deck and to add a slide yourself and tell us about yourself be creative add a slide add an image or video or drawing whatever you want to do and play with the features and just add it to our slide deck at the end uh, next week we're going to be on June 6th which would be uh, coming up soon, we're going to be working with multimedia. That means videos and images, where to find them, how to edit them, uh, that sort of thing, which will also lead us into YouTube on June 13th, which is one of my favorite things to teach because there's such a tre treasure trove of stuff um, on YouTube. Um, and, and by at that point, I feel like we're going to have covered a lot of the basic information about just how to navigate and deal with stuff on, on the internet. Uh, and using digital tools that we'll start talking about more about pedagogy. And we're going to talk about what flip learning is, what it looks like, how you can develop resources for it, um, and then get into some other things. Now, uh, just so you know, I'm going to be pre-recording uh, one of the webinars for July 11, uh, because I will be on the road then and not have access to the internet. So that will be another one that will not be live. Next week, though, on June 6th, we will be live. However, um, this is our hashtag, EdRising at Rio. If you have anything to share, uh, share it on Twitter using that hashtag. And if you have any more, if you have any other information or want some help or coaching with anything that you're doing technology related, personally or professionally, I'd be happy to help you. Just send me an email or contact me via Twitter, and I'll be happy to work with you at any time. So uh, thanks again for attending today's webinar. I'm going to stop sharing here. I appreciate you coming after the fact to watch this recording. And I will see you next week uh, online. Thank you. Bye-bye.